Welcome to Ken's Corner Podcast, Season 3. Get ready for expert analysis and rising wrestling stars. Now here we go with your host, Ken Judge. Hi everyone, this is Ken from Ken's Corner and I'm excited to be, be back today with my Leafs fan panel. Although yesterday's game hurt a little bit, I hope none of you has jumped off the Leafs bandwagon and I don't see any of you saying that you did because you wouldn't be here today on a Leaf fan panel if you did. So I'm going to go around the room and introduce everyone here today. Uh, everyone remembers Paul Hanny Hendrick from the face of Maple Leafs TV. Welcome Paul Hanny Hendrick. My co-host... Joe Moyer. Joe, thanks for getting out there and meeting Gunner the other day. Uh, we got that uh, wonderful wrestling event coming, but today we're to here to talk about the Leafs, and you'll get your chance to uh, talk back to the panel on uh, our attack of uh, William Nylander since you weren't here last uh, podcast. Next, we got JT of uh, all the way from Thunder Bay. JT from Leaf Fan Panel fame. George from Calgary, Alberta, or lives in Calgary, or Alberta. I can't even say it right now, but that's where he is. He's holding strong out in Calgary. Welcome back, George. And then our Gord from deep in the heart of Leafland, downtown Toronto, right by, uh, I guess, right by where the Leafs play. Game three coming up Wednesday. All right, guys, we're just going to drop right in here and talk about this, this, uh, this game last night. Now, I need to know, well, everyone switched up on me here. That's okay. Has anyone decided the Leafs are in trouble? Are you worried? And before you answer that, I want to give you a bit of history. And I did have a promo and said this wrong in case any of you has watched the promo. The Leafs lost first game last year against Tampa Bay 7-3 to and turned that around and won in six games. Boston won that game last year 3-1 to against Florida and eventually lost to the Florida Panthers in seven games. Now, does it matter? Are you worried? George, you're the first stop. Are you worried by what happened last night? Um, I'm not too worried. I'm uh, still, you know, uh, still here being a Leaf fan. So I'm not too worried. I just want to see our, our whole group out there putting in as the much as much as they can. And if that, if that ends up being a, our loss, well, then, hey, there you go. JT, your answer. Are you? Uh, no, not at all. I think at the end of the day, we outplayed them yesterday's game, regardless of what the pundits might say and whine about. If you look statistically, we outplayed them. Um, they outgoalied us. That was the end of the day. Their goalie did more than ours. And uh, we, I don't know, ref's going to call penalties, going to let them play like a playoff team. You should let both teams play like a playoff team. That's right. And we will talk about our goalie situation coming up here soon. Mr. Hendrick, what is your opinion? Are you worried? Worried? No, Ken. But, you know, I am concerned. I mean, that's five consecutive losses and all pretty much by a similar score. Um, as you mentioned and indicated, you know, what happened against Tampa last year. Um, plenty of time to come back. And I look forward to game two on Wednesday night. I like the start they had last night. I like the ability to come in on the four check and get things going. Um, but it's going to come down, I think, inevitably to goaltending. Our, our club just didn't get enough of it last night. Not even close. Full credit to Swayman. I don't want to jump on the topic before we get to it. But I think that's going to be a big, big key for the Leafs. Our top six, their top six, even Steven, their bottom six had a pretty good go of it. And I just think uh, we saw a little more depth from Boston last night. I know the Leafs are capable of competing with that depth. Um, it's going to have to start in game two. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I, I don't see anyone here shaking their head no. Gord, your opinion, are you worried? I'm not worried at all. Um, I think this is something that, like Paul has said, it's going to come down to goaltending. Um, and the Leafs just have to play their game. So, and then simply stop playing Boston's game, play Toronto's game. And last but not least, my co-host, Joe Moyer. I know you got lots to say. Lay it on no. us, sir. I do. No, uh, am I, it's game one, and it's a long series. Am I worried? No. Concerned? Yes. Am I optimistic? Not based on what I've seen so far in the last few games. Uh, running towards the end of the season. 
I love their start last night, like uh, like Hanny said, but I think they've got to smarten up, and it's about adjustments. And I think this team needs to make an adjustment and stop going out there and trying to prove how tough they are by taking sticking and slashing those kind of penalties. Team toughness to me is going to the dirty areas, responding with a big goal, a big clean hit okay. after a play. That sends a message. The stick jabs and the I I did you're just they're killing themselves with it. And the goaltending, you know my stance on it. Um, I can't wait to see Samson off gone next year. I have no confidence in him at all. Well, actually, thank you for saying that about Samson. I'm I'm going to direct the next question. Everyone's going to get an answer in this one, too. You're first, though, Joe. Who starts if you're Sheldon Keefe? Not if you're Joe Moyer. If you're Sheldon Keefe, who starts in that for the Leafs in game two? Well, based on his response, he didn't throw Samson off under the bus. And of course, he's not going to do that in game one. He said that none of those goals were his fault. I beg to differ. I thought three of them were typical Samson off goals lobbed in from the point that he just cannot make himself big and come out and see and they find their way in the net. I think they'll start, I think they'll start Samson off again. Uh, it'll be a short leash, though. And if he if he has a rough first or second period, I think the inevitable, you've got to go with Joseph Wall and try to turn things around. Yeah, that's that makes sense. George, do you have anything to follow up on that? Everyone's going to have their say. I'm going to stick with what Joe said there. Uh, yeah, we bring Samson off back out. And, yeah, I I don't know if I'm very confident with Wool, but I'm hoping Samson off can turn it around and we can get some defense in there and help him. Mm -hmm. That's our next topic, and thanks for bringing that part up. Uh, JT? Um, I think the first goal that he allowed in, he actually could have stopped that two on one. He was kind of floppy on that. I think that broke his confidence. And uh, like Henny said, and Joe has said that he, once, you, I don't know, he doesn't come out and, and attack on the out, outside shots. So now he's being feeling timid. He's falling back into his crease. When he falls back into his crease, he allows a lot more space and he's not making those stops. So three of those goals were from out in the perimeter, and three of those goals he honestly he was out of position, didn't see, and they handcuffed him and they went in. So had he been out further, I think he's a bigger man, but he's playing timid and afraid again, and he sucks himself back to his to his crease, and that's a weakness. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Hendrick. Um, I think I'm just going to go status quo with what the guys have said. And uh, I think Samsonov does get another shot at this. You've got to look at the sample size of what he was able to do from, you know, January to basically the end of the season. He was lights out. And I think you've got to go with that. Um, the other kid, Joseph Walls, come off a, a high ankle sprain. I don't, I, I don't think his consistency isn't where it has to be. Uh, to make an impact in this series. And I don't think Sheldon Keith has a choice. I think it's going to go with Ilya Samsonov. And, and it has to be given what he did last season, given what he's done in the second half of this season. They have no choice. The other thing is penalty killing, guys. And ultimately, your best penalty killer has to be your goaltender. And Samsonov has got to step his game up in that regard because it's not coming from up front. Um, that PK is really, really scaring me. And, and uh, as Joe and others have said, uh, they've got to be more disciplined. They've got to stay out of the box. They cannot afford uh, to give this Boston Bruins power play any more confidence than it has now. And it really hasn't been great, but it looked pretty good last night. Yeah. Uh, Gord. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with everybody else. I think Samsonov gets the start. But I'm going to say the same thing as Joe. I think he's going to be on a short leash. If uh, the, starts to, the ship starts to sink quickly, I think he will pull him and, and go with Wall. Um, I think for him, it's a confidence issue. Um, I think he needs to get you know some, some major confidence behind him like he had when he came back from being on waivers and come back with the confidence and get out there. And, and yeah, they got to stay out of the box. They're, yeah. they're, they're telling themselves. Hundred percent. Now, is that uh, are those penalties legit penalties, guys, or are they uh, Boston Bruin type uh, arena penalties against the Leafs? <laughs> are we for um, conspiracy today, boys, or uh, do we just need to shore that up? I can guarantee uh, that that Matthews penalty. Sorry, I'm gonna put my hand up. Yeah. Um, that Matthews penalty. Uh, like I was saying earlier before we started recording, um, McAvoy actually stick checked Matthews. McAvoy pulled his stick up, pulled Matthew's stick into his own face and got the call. 
So how those little things like that get called in playoff hockey, I don't know. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I love the idea of letting guys play, but you have to call it evenly for both teams. One can't play a, a tight, rough, physical game and get away with it while the other one gets called when they do it. That's the way I looked at it. Yeah, 100%. Mr. Hendrick, you're first up on this question. Do you like what happened with our defense? And if so, who would you – I guess the only players that we have that we could – uh, replace with the guys that are in there are Giordano and Brody or Timmons. Which one of those guys could come in and make an impact and who would be sitting? Yeah, that's a tough question. I think if somebody's going to come in, you've got to go with the veteran TJ Brody and Brody has not had a great season. Let's be honest, but he's someone that Sheldon Keefe will not hesitate to put in for 20 to 22 minutes tonight and uh, a night. Uh, so I think it's TJ that comes in. Uh, then I guess you got to look at a right-handed shot as to who's coming out probably. Um, well, it's hard to say. You know what? That's a tough, tough question. Uh, I, I think you're going to stick with the status quo for at least one more game. Uh, I'm, I'm not really happy with those three, but I think TJ Brody would be the odds-on favorite to come to come into this game and, 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 uh, help out. And, and, and we'll see from there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I still think the Leafs are going to win this series. And, and, and I, I don't know why I think that. I think it's just about time. I think this team's talented enough. That core group has been together for eight years now. And, uh, I think there's more than enough to complement the defense, regardless of whether it's TJ coming in or not to get this job done over the course of the next six games. Yeah, I know I'm going to jump right up to you, Joe, because I know that you have an invested uh, time into this conversation with me uh, for uh, the better part of this whole season. Uh, who is coming out? I know you're going to who you're going to say already, and I'm pretty sure you're going to put in TJ Brody, but I'm going to leave that to you. Yeah, no, Brody, Brody would be next up. I thought Joel Edmondson had a horrific game last night. He's not looked yeah. good since he's come off with injury, I think. From Sheldon's Keith perspective, I think he'd be the first one to come out. Um, but you know my thoughts on Timothy Lilligren. The experiment's got to end. We've just seen enough. He Over the years, Boston knows exactly. They gain the blue line, throw it in his corner. They go in and forecheck him, and inevitably he gets hit, turns it over. And uh, I've not seen good things from Lilligren. I've seen flashes of it, just not enough. But I think they'd keep it in because of the right-handed shot, and Edmondson would come out. Hey, guys from the fan panel, are you in agreement? Uh, would you take anyone out? Anyone want to put their hand up first? Gord, what's your what's your opinion on this? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Joe there. I think uh, Edmondson hasn't been there. Um, if they're gonna mm -hmm. take anybody out, it's gonna be Edmondson and probably Willigren, and it will be probably Brody and Giordano that come in. If that does happen, they'll bring in the veteran presence um, of Giordano to see it maybe going. Calm the down a little it? bit of defense. Sorry, I should be putting my hand up too. <laughs> do you see? Do you see it happening in game two, or is that more of a later in the series? No, I think if it happens, it'll be game three. I think he's going to stick with the status quo, and he's going to give them kind of one more game to say, "Show me what you got." And if not, then it's time for a shakeup. That's that's what I think. Honestly, I think they gotta play Toronto Maple Leaf hockey and not worry about what Boston is doing. Awesome. JT, we're going to jump to you, and this is a, well, this is kind of a funny situation because we all kind of roasted Joe on the last podcast, and he wasn't there to defend himself. So I'm going to let you double down on Mr. William Nylander and tell Joe why Mr. Nylander deserves to be playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs right now. He is a 100-point man. The guy is all about offense. We need that right now. Unfortunately, we just seen when you take Nylander out of the lineup, and you take McMahon out of the lineup, that that farged up the entire bottom six, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you're, now you're pulling people from bottom six to fill in the top six, uh, and it shuffled everything. We didn't see our team out there missing those two key components, and I'm sorry, but Nylander is a very key component on this team. Um, you, you need it. George, you're, you're, it's your answer now. Oh, I agree. I, I agree with JT. Uh, 
Uh, Nylander is a key opponent, and um, he does know how to dangle that puck. He, although he does sometimes lose it at the blue line, but he uh, he's 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 a big key in our in our team, and we did miss him. And I can't wait to see him play play the next game. Okay, Joe, this is uh, all yours, brother. It's uh, you're welcome to uh, have you your say now. Listen, he's a top 10, 12 player in the NHL, and no question about it. Does he have the offensive skills? Absolutely. Did I like the William Nylander pre-contract? Yes, I did. Do I like him since $11 million in an old trade? No, I do not. I don't think he's had the same second half of the season. He certainly is not happy being put on the third line. If you guys watched him in the last month of the season, he's looked disengaged to me. He's had a couple of chances, but again, he's a periphery player. And at $11 million with a no trade, we're stuck with him. I expect more. I expect the William Nylander that was the dominant player for us for the first half of the season, driving the net, um, a threat out there. I didn't see that the last couple of weeks. Now, whether he's battling injury or not, I don't know. But for me, old school, 11 million, no trade. You should be the top one or two player on the ice most nights. And I'm sorry, in the second half of the season, he hasn't been. So I like the guy. Love to see him smarten up. But that's what he is what he is. All talent, defensively, not responsible. Kind of plays when he wants to play, and that's what loses me with him. Yeah, but we're stuck with him. I do want to point one thing out that I do point out to Joe every time he talks about this on the radio. William Nylander right now is still a six point seven million dollar player. His eleven million dollar contract doesn't actually kick in till till next season. So technicalities, Joe, but I kind of got you on that one. He's pretty good at six point seven million still, and God, we really need to see him on that third line come come game two so i'm hoping it was just a flu mr hendrick now if all if the inevitable i mean what what we don't want to see happen i'm not going to say inevitable that's the wrong word for this um if boston comes out and doesn't allow us to get back in this series and they beat us uh for some for, uh, reason anyway uh, it's hard for me to even say that what happens with the Leafs? Do we tear down the management? Does the coach go? Does Shanahan go? Does Mitch Marner go? I hope not. I don't think you blow anything up. I mean, you've just had, what are we now? Three, four consecutive, three 100-point seasons. I mean, those aren't easy to get. Um, and you don't want to blow anything up. Mitch Marner, to me, is a generational talent. William Neeland is not far from being a generational talent. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, at 6.7 to 6.9 million annually, we were having the same conversation about William when he signed the contract. And then everybody was saying what a bargain he was. Now at 11, he's going to have to work his way back up into everybody's faith. And I think he's capable of doing such. I think they've got to keep on uh, with those guys because, as I've said in this podcast previously, I don't think you can replace them for what they bring uh, to the lineup. I, I I just don't think, and I think you've got to stay with them and live with their with their warts, for lack of a better term. Uh, they're just great, great hockey players. And uh, in terms of you know coaching, uh, my brother-in-law was saying the same thing to me last night. Do they fire Keith if if they lose this series? Oh, they might. But I think Sheldon will get hired pretty quickly. Um, you know, the building's full. Uh, the team's competitive. Um, there's only one happy team at the end of all of this. Only one. And the other team, as I've mentioned, is the team that drafts first uh, in, in the draft. Uh, last year, Chicago was the other happy team. So <laughs> I know it's been tough. And I, this is a long answer for what should be a short question. I don't think you blow anything up. And no, you do not trade Marner. Uh, might there be a firing at the executive or coaching level? There possibly could, but I don't think you get rid of either of the players we've talked about. And I think you keep Sheldon Keith as well. Okay. I'm going to ask everyone the same question. Pick one person that is in the Leaf organization, Mr. Hendrick, that is under the most heat during this playoffs. Well, I think it's going to be the head coach, Sheldon Keith. Uh, he's on the he's on the brink of the abyss. He's he's the guy that you know inevitably makes all the changes. And you know when uh, he's partially applauded, lose, and everybody says, "I told you so." Uh, we've had a great run the last few years. I know there's a lot of talent on this team, but I do remember you know the Blue Jays with those great great teams and how tough it was to manage those teams according to their manager back then uh, they won two championships something the Leafs haven't done 
but managing talent is not easy easy. I think Sheldon's done a pretty good job of that. And I think this is on management and Brad Tree leaving moving forward next year. Take what they've got, add to it. Don't don't discard some of the great, great talent you have because I think you're just going to maintain where you are. Um, I know status quo isn't the answer, but I don't think you you want to blow anything up. Yeah. Does anyone on the panel uh, have a difference of opinion? Uh, Gord. I, I am going to agree with Paul in the fact of Sheldon Keith, but I think True Living is is there as well. Um, he, he's made some moves, and uh, Brendan Shanahan's looking at the overall aspect of the, the, the core in terms of their executives as well right now, of maybe who they could bring in to kind of rock the stuff a little bit and not be as conservative with um, – everybody in general right now i don't think they're going to get rid of marner but i think they've got to look at uh, definitely in the off season finding a goaltender that's not samson off yeah okay we're coming down to the finals here guys thanks for playing along you guys are really good i think i'm the only one that's ever cut anyone off during this podcast so that's a good thing um we're gonna do our game two predictions and our series predictions and george we're gonna start with you Ah, uh, my predictions from that game two. I say we win four three, series. and it's gonna, yeah, it's a four three win. And what about the series? The series, it's gonna go seven. Joe, I think we're gonna lose in Boston, and we're gonna have to pull up our socks. There'll be a quite a big adjustment back home, so I think we're probably gonna, I'll say five three Boston tomorrow, but we're gonna take it in game seven. Gord. Uh, I'm going to go 3 2 Leaves. And I think it's going to go six. Mr. Hendrick, Paul. Oh. It's going seven. And, uh, and I think 5 3 Toronto in game two Wednesday night. I don't know why, but I, I just think the guys are going to get going and, uh, and, and the goaltending is going to be good enough to keep three out. Or at least three in the net, no more than that. JT. I'm going to call it a uh, 4-1 for Toronto. Samson, I was going to do his job for once, and he's going to get his confidence back. Um, one or two of those goals will be empty netters because Boston will be down. It'll be yanking a goalie really early. And uh, I think I think it'll be a tight game, like a 2-1 type of game that we end up beating them 4-1 because of empty netters. That's my call. Is Boston's goalie going to be swimming? Does anyone know this? Oh, yeah. They're not, <laughs> yeah. they're not, they're not going to rotate? No. <laughs> uh, my series prediction, I'm going to go with game seven. Leafs win, obviously. Um, tonight's game, I mean, Monday's game, usually we're recording on Whistle Radio, so it's always, you always uh, say tonight, Joe. But anyway, my score is 3 1. Austin Matthews gets on the score sheet. Mitch Marner has a good game, and hopefully, William Nylander starts in that third line, which will give us a, a three line attack, which I think would. Uh, kind of drive Boston's uh, lines a little bit nuts. They, they, they kind of took advantage of not having Nylander on that third line, I believe. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you so much. Um, we're going to come back on here, win or lose. Hopefully all of will join me again on Ken's Corner. Uh, George, all the way from Calgary, hold it strong in Calgary for us. JT, all the way up there in Thunder Bay, Ian's trying to jump on the podcast now in the last second, but I'm not going to let him. Sorry, Ian. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Paul Hendrick, <laughs> the, uh, Henny, uh, the face and the voice of the Maple Leaf TV. Thanks for laughing. You made me laugh for a second. And Gord, all the way from the heart of downtown Toronto, thank you for staying strong for the Leafs. And my co-host, we'll see you next Saturday inside that squared circle at the wrestling event in Stovall, Ontario. Can't wait, Joe. And before that, we'll see you, we'll hear you, because uh, we got faces for radio on Whistle Radio 102.9 FM, Stovall. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Go, Leafs, go. Thank you. Go, Leafs, go. Go, Leafs, go.